So it seems it wasn't that long ago that Microsoft was urging everybody to get off of XP so they can move to 7. You know, because they're saying XP is no longer supported, it's not secure anymore, Windows 7 is better, it's more secure. Now, 10 years later, now they've been saying everybody should get off Windows 7 and go to Windows 8 or Windows 10. Like, I'm not a big Windows user because I'm mostly Linux. But I mean, I use Windows 7, I have a Windows 7 machine, and it just seems, it feels new to me. Like, when I used to be in IT, we were running Windows XP, and we were running Windows Server 2003, you know, everything from that era. I mean, Windows 2008 was still kind of out. Windows 2008 was, of course, kind of part of 7. It was kind of the same era, I guess, of operating systems. So Windows 2008 still feels new to me, and I actually have a, some stuff running on that too. Anyway, long story short, Microsoft is no longer supporting it anymore as of January 14. So I haven't turned on a machine in a while. So now I'm kind of curious because everybody's been like doom and gloom, no Windows 7 and is coming, doom and gloom, you need to upgrade. But really, what happens when you try to use Windows 7 past the expiry date? So in this video, we're gonna find that out. So my setup here is kind of unconventional. I have a KVM switch, so this is my Linux machine. This is what I do all my work on. I do coding, I do all sorts of stuff. And then I have another machine, which is Windows 7, which is what I use for games mostly. Now, I could do that in VM, or I could do Wine, or I can do, there's a lot of things you can do. Most of the time in a VM, it won't even run. Like, it'll tell you that it doesn't have 3D accelerations. Yeah, I know there's ways you can get that to work, but I just don't want to be bothered. So, I still have a Windows 7 machine that I use for games. Now, I haven't used it in a while, so, I'm kind of curious, what happens when you turn on a Windows 7 machine when it's out of expiry? Is it going to let me use it? Is it going to automatically switch me to 10? What's going to happen? So in this video, we're going to find that out right now. So I'm going to switch over to that machine. So it's currently off. Now another part of my setup that's unconventional is the fact that my machine is not actually here. It's actually in the basement. Because having two machines, it was creating a lot of heat, a lot of noise, a lot of dust, and taking away from my legroom. So I just put them in the basement and I ran long cables and everything's through the KVM. So I'm going to go downstairs and turn it on. So it should be booted up right now, hopefully. Alright, so there's a splash screen. That's the welcome screen. And of course, everything's gonna to wanna to update like Steam because it's been a while. But really, nothing's gonna happen. It's still gonna work. It's not any less secure than it was a month ago. Because they, they always push this security thing. They say, oh, it's not secure anymore. Technically, Windows 7 at this point is more secure than it was when it came out. Because when it came out, there would have been a whole whack of security holes in it. And now, if you update it, all the security holes are gone. So think about it, Windows 10 is less secure now than it will be in, say, a year from now. Or 10 years from now. Because it has security holes right now, it's just they haven't been discovered. So as you discover them, they'll patch them. It's just a normal cycle of software. So they always keep pushing you to update to the latest because it's more secure, but is it really? Like, if you're relying on the software to prevent being hacked, you're already hacked. Like, just consider yourself already hacked. If this machine was directly connected to the internet right now, without a firewall, it would be hacked. Doesn't matter if I connected it now, or if I connected it 10 years ago, it would be hacked. You don't want to rely on updates for security. You want to design your infrastructure to be secure from the very get-go. A simple, basic NAT firewall like a Linksys or D-Link, for most part, is going to be okay. Now, if you have anything on your network where you need to forward a port, what you actually want to do is you want to set up those services on a separate VLAN. Now, a VLAN is a way to kind of split up a network into different segments. And basically, as far as that network is concerned, it's its own network. So to communicate from one VLAN to the other, you need to go through the router or the firewall, which is, it kind of acts as both. 
But the idea here is by going through the router, the router can tell you if you're allowed to access a certain resource. So now you can set up different rules, such as what ports or what IPs can access what. So if, let's say you have a game server, so you have the internet coming in through your firewall to the game server. Now, if there's a vulnerability in a game server for a, say, a remote code execution or whatever, no, because if it's up to date, technically, there shouldn't be, technically. I say that because there could be exploits that are not known yet or not patched. That's why you don't want to rely on patching because just because something is patched and it's up to date doesn't mean that it's secure. So my point is, if you're just relying on updates, you're probably compromised already. There's probably a secure hole at some point that was not patched while the box was online. So anyway, so let's go back. So you have your server, it's facing the internet because you have a port for it. So that system, I consider it a risk. That's a risky system. Now it's on your network. So if that machine gets compromised through some kind of exploit, there's a possibility of then it can go to other machines, even though they're behind the firewall. So with VLANs, you split that off. So all the stuff that's facing the internet that has a port, I put that on a separate VLAN. That way, if something does get hacked, it's, it's only contained within that VLAN. So all my other stuff on all my other VLANs, including outdated Windows 7 machines, XP, there's a lot of businesses still running XP out there, but they're behind a firewall, so they're more or less safe, sort of. There's ways to get hacked, you know, like, there's still, it's obviously a risk, but it's not as much a risk. So bottom line is, keep your stuff firewalled and secure from the internet, and 99% you're gonna be safe. Now, of course, there could be weird exploits where like remote, like a code execution from a USB drive, like more of the design issues, like say your USB drive auto, auto runs the software and you have a hacked USB drive or whatever, like there's still ways to, to exploit a machine from the inside. But as far as a home network or even a small business, as long as you don't have users doing stupid stuff, you're probably gonna be okay. So like I plan to keep this Windows 7 machine going for as long as I can because I can't stand Windows 8. It's ugly. It's it's actually harder to use. Like and Windows 10 isn't that much better. It's a little bit better, but I just don't like the way it looks. All the blockiness. Everything's so big and white, and I just I can't stand it. I mean, there's some stuff you can do to fix it, like classic shell, but still not the same. So I'm gonna keep using Windows 7 for as long as possible. And the reality is. It's not any less secure than it was 10 years ago because, I mean, it technically it's more secure because all the stuff is patched up. But either way, it doesn't matter because it's behind a firewall. But yeah, long story short, as long as you're behind a firewall, you're pretty much fine. So like, Microsoft will make you panic. And I mean, I've had people, you know, they get the pop-up. Your Windows 7 is gonna expire. Oh no, we need to update now. Don't worry about it. Like just, they're just trying to scare you. And the problem I have too with Windows 8 and Windows 10 is that they spy on you. Because this new thing that, all the big tech companies are trying to push now is hardware and software as a service. Even Tesla cars are doing this. You're buying a service. It's connected to the internet. That's why they're pushing 5G so much because with 5G, it's gonna enable way more connectivity. Everything you buy is gonna be connected and you're buying a service, you're not buying the product. And I hate that. That's what they're doing with Windows 10. It's a service. Microsoft owns your machine, you're just renting it. They can do whatever they want. They can push all the updates they want. They can change features on you. I mean, you can't even customize the colors anymore. Even in Windows 3.1, you can customize the colors. In Windows 10, you have like four different themes to pick from and they're all pretty much basic. So like, they don't want you to customize anything. You're buying a service. That's what you're doing with Windows 10. And I absolutely do not want anything to do with that. It's a terrible model. Unfortunately, a lot of people are buying into it, but no, I don't want to have anything to do with that stuff. So I'm gonna stick with Windows 7, but my main machine is always gonna be Linux. But yeah, so this was just a quick little fun video like with the big clickbaity title. I knew that nothing would happen. I just thought I would make this video for fun. The point of this video really is that if you're still running Windows 7, you don't have to feel bad. You don't have to feel rushed to upgrade. It's fine. As long as it's behind a firewall, this goes for anything. Because like at one point they were saying Windows 7 is secure. Now all of a sudden it's not secure anymore. What changed? It's just that now they want you to be on the newest one. And it's always going to be like that. Windows 10 right now is considered the most secure, you know, you should be up to date. Well, guess what? 10 years from now, when they decide they want to do Windows 11, they're going to tell you to get off Windows 10. It's a never ending cycle. And for business, it's ridiculous to keep up to date with that because like at work, we just got off of XP. We're on seven now. And now they're already talking about Windows 10. Like that's so much overhead for IT guys to just keep, you're never up to date because by the time you update, now they're telling you that you have to update to something else. So like it's a never ending battle. 
So at the, end, at the end of the day, what you want to do is you want to secure your infrastructure in a way where the software doesn't matter so much. If your network is segregated properly with VLANs, you're using proper practices, you're going to be fine. It doesn't matter what you're running. I mean, at our hospital, we're still running like NT4 server and some stuff because it's so old that there's no more support for the software. That's the other issue with proprietary software is a big issue because you buy, you install it, you have support for like three years and then poof, it's gone. No more support, the company might even be gone. That's why hospitals and governments and all that are running a really outdated operating system because there's no upgrade path. So yeah, so anyway, so this is it for this video. Just thought I'd do this for fun. Have a good one, bye. Get the job done with this new product from Microsoft.